the light is red, the kids are in bed, which means it is time for Mile High Musings with me, Aaron Yowell, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sunshine. Welcome to episode 18 of Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Aaron Yall. I hope you all had a fantastic week. Man, I need to change the intro now that I've switched time slots because my kids are definitely not in bed. I have uh, morning people. I am a morning people and my daughters are morning people, so that's good, but not on a Sunday, not on a Saturday either, I'll tell you that. Ah, for another time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sports fans of all ages, it is time we ascend to the top of the peak and breathe in that rarefied mountain air as I bring you sports takes a mile above the rest. On this morning's show, we're going to talk about the abs and their seeming collapse. Last night was the most embarrassed I've ever been to be an abs fan, and they were last in the league not that long ago. So that's fun. The Nuggets are still very good at basketball. We're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, college football, CU lost, CU wins, Air Force loses, and college basketball tipped off this week. But before we get to the good good, let's handle our business. For the last nine years, IE Sports Radio has been bringing you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IE Sports Radio on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to keep up with the latest in sports and with our shows. Also, make sure to check out our daily updated website, IESportsRadio.com. At IESportsRadio.com, you can see our daily show schedule and all of our show pages with personal bios and the podcast feed for each individual show, including this one, Mile High Musings. Check out the show page at IESportsRadio.com slash Mile High Musings. In addition to our show pages, you can catch the IE Sports Radio blog, Hall of Fame, Fans of the Month page, and our merchandise shop, including t-shirts, tank tops, caps, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, and so much more. For nearly a decade here at IE Sports Radio, we've continued to be by the fans and for the fans, and we thank each and every one of you for all of your support and for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. What's good, sports fans? It's your boy Aaron Yell from Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And I am super excited to tell you about a new sponsor on the network, Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion Lake Elsinore Storm single A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all-brisket beef jerky offers gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, is low in sugar, and high in protein. That's my favorite part. This is some of the best beef jerky you can get your hands on. Check them out online, planetjerky.com. Once again, a huge shout-out to our sponsor, Planet Jerky, premium brisket beef jerky. The jerky that is on a whole other planet. And we are back Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all other sports. Welcome to segment one, Runaway Train. After a hot start, the Avs have pulled the ripcord on whatever was working during that 6-0 start. This week in particular, the Avs went 1-2 and two and were outscored. Well, my math is wrong because when I was writing this, it was a lot different. I think 15-10 to 10 this week now by the time the game ended last night. They started the week beating the Devils in a wild 6-3 game, which that was a good hockey game. It was crazy. There was a lot of just insanity. In the second period of that game, Miko had himself a 3.9, McCarr had three assists, and McKinnon had a goal and an assist. And then the Avs lost a heartbreaker to the Kraken. The Kraken. I now officially hate playing Seattle. 
they just muck up the game, and it's their style, and that's what they do. But uh, it really frustrates the Avs, which in turn frustrates me. <laughs> they fought back to tie it, and with 30 seconds left, they screwed up a defensive assignment. Two two guys chased the puck, leaving Oliver Bjorkstrand wide open for the game-winning goal, and there was nothing that could be done. And then last night, last night was the equivalent of the Broncos letting the Dolphins hang 70 on them. In the first period, the Avs got down one nothing and looked like it didn't phase them. They're getting pucks on net. They were out skating the Blues. They just looked the aggressor for about the middle 10 minutes there. And then they stupidly gave up two goals at the end of the period and all of a sudden found themselves down 3 nothing to a less than stellar Blues team. And it looks like they just flat out quit after that. I mean, I know they scored two more. They ended up losing 8-2 to two last night. But, I mean, they just looked like they quit. And I was not, you know, I have, I have not been buying into the there is no leadership without the captain on the bench narrative until last night. I, I tweeted that, you know, I, I, during the game I tweeted something to the effect of the Avs need the equivalent of the Michael Malone rage timeout. And there needs to, at the end of the second, I said there needs to be a guy in that locker room who's having a, a right screaming fit. And I still think that needs to happen. Coach Bednar was incensed after the game. I've only seen like clips of the of the press conference, and I'm going to go back and watch it after the show. But of course, the the hot take sound bites that are out there on social media are him just being mad, and Betsy doesn't get mad. He is the coolest dude on the planet, and he was mad. Said it was the worst period of hockey, the third period in this game, that he'd ever seen the team play. Uh-oh. You know what? Hey, that noise. Fun fact I found it is not my microphone. It has something to do with the output that is then recycling into the feed. Isn't that crazy? All this time I thought it was my microphone. It's not. Nah. I mean, if I would have been in that locker room after the first period alone, I would have been dog cussing everybody. I would have been so far up people's stuff, they would have been Jim Henson puppets. Well, you know, ah, yay! There would have been no yay from Kermit the Frog. You guys really got to figure it out. It's terrible. Gosh. Kermit. You know, I wasn't smashing the panic button after the 7 nothing loss to Vegas last week. But after the Kraken game and this 8-2 to two embarrassment, I'm hovering over it. Something's got to change. A couple of these dudes we brought in, like Thomas Tatar. We brought him in, spent some money on him. And it wasn't it wasn't a lot. It was like a flyer. It was a rental contract. He's not working out. He's He went from third line to first line to fourth line. He's playing terrible. Jonathan Drouin, he's pedestrian. I'd rather have Riley Tufty in there, the kid from from Loveland. I'd rather have him in there every game and let Tufty get a rhythm because he's at least big and he'll battle dudes. Good morning, Taryn. Thank you for the shout out on chat. Um, yeah, I don't know. If Nathan McKinnon is the hockey robot that everyone claims him to be, he needs to be the leader. That dude is the dude in the locker room who has the Michael Jordan killer instinct. And if I'm him or if I'm Kale or if I'm Miko, Wearing that A on my chest, I'm not having any of this. A right screaming fit. Period. And end of story. The defense has been flat out terrible lately, but also this year in general. I think the defense has been bad, and it it stinks because it looks like Alexander Georgiev has been bad. He really hasn't. And everybody's calling for him. He was not great tonight. That's for sure. But I go back and look at the box scores, and I look at the games that have happened. And he's been in the net for all of the, the crap games. The 2 4 nothing shutouts against Pittsburgh and Buffalo. And the 7 nothing embarrassment against Vegas. And now this train wreck. He gave up 6 of the 8. The defense has been bad in front of him. 
our third defensive pairing, and I've said this for a couple weeks now, our third defensive pairing of Josh Manson and Jack Johnson, they're terrible. They get next to no ice time because they're terrible, which is wearing out McCarr and Taves. It's wearing out Sam Gerrard and Bo Byram. They're not great defensively either because they're not disciplined. And so you're asking two of the best defensemen in the league to do all the defensive work. And your forwards don't like to play defense. They like to cherry pick. So that makes it tough on the goalie. So they've given up, the, the Avs have given up 42 goals against in 13 games. Now, they're 8-5, and five, and thankfully it's a long season, and they they came out and won the first 10 games in theory. Like, they were 7-3. and three. But since then, they've gone, you know, 1-2 and two, and have not looked great. Defense hasn't looked great. Special teams have been anything but special. And no matter how good our offensive talent is, when you're giving up 7 or more goals in two different games, it looks bad. So I say I'm hovering over the panic button and I'm, I'm upset and I definitely turned the game off um, at 4 nothing, and then was checking in on it because I was mad. I didn't want to be mad because it's sports and I love sports, but there was literally nothing I could do to affect the outcome of that game. So instead of choosing to be mad, I spent time with mine nine-month-old daughter, and it was much better than watching the Avs play. Period. End of story. But of course, I was checking in on the game as things went. And then uh, I turned it back on in the third and watched a lot more goals go in, and it was terrible. However, I say all that to say the Avalanche play an 82-game season. Yes, they're on a little bit of a slide. Yes, they have some things to figure out. But this is, like I said, this is the most mad I've seen Jared Bednar. He's one of the best coaches in the game. But they've got, they've got some things to take care of. Something looks amiss. And I know we're putting new guys together. And we have an entirely new third line. And all this jazz. I will say this. Every time we've gone back to night one line combinations, we win. We lost those two games to Buffalo or to Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Sorry, respectfully. Then we came back, played the blues once rolled out night one line combinations and won four one. And then we lose to Vegas and we start messing around. We lose to the crack and we start messing around with our lines and we lose here. The Vegas game obviously was somewhere in between. Or no, it was the Devils. Vegas and Devils. But every time we've messed with our lines, y'all. It's not been good. Coach is calling the timeout, y'all. On the other side, let's go for some campus tours. You're listening to Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. 
as we say in Buffalo, Go Bills! You can check out Patty on the Buffalo Huddle on Tuesdays here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. It's game week against those Bills. So definitely uh, check out Patty's show after the game on Tuesday. Had to give Patty a shout out because it's game week. Also because Von Miller came out and said that he is a Bronco lifer, basically. And his comments made me get a little, you know, got a little dusty in the room. So... Don't forget to check out Patty's show, our show, and all the shows over on X. Uh, At Mile High Musings underscore IESR. Shout out to Steven who's in the chat. Good morning. Cup of coffee in hand, I hope. Let's jump into segment two. I wish I could go back to college. Life was so simple back then. But we're going to call this football edition because there's a lot going on. And I'm going to run through a lot of stuff real quick here because there's a lot. There's a lot. But we're going to start with the biggest ticket. The CU Buffs. The Buffs were up 24-17 going into halftime against Arizona, and they lost. Buffalo, Buffaloes lose 34-31. Their fourth loss in a row. Yeah, fourth loss in a row. Like I said, they were up 24-17 going into halftime. And then just didn't play defense. Shador Sanders was 22-35 for 262 and two touchdowns. He added 29 rushing yards and another touchdown. But in the end, the defense couldn't hold their water. And the Wildcats walked off the field thanks to a field goal. As time expired. Going up the road to Fort Collins, CSU took on the San Diego State Aztecs at Canvas Field in Fort Collins. Canvas Stadium, excuse me, in Fort Collins. Jumped on them early. Rams were up 15 nothing at halftime. They ended up winning... <laughs> I accidentally fat figured my notes. It said 22-159. to That ain't right. 22-15. to Braden Fowler-Nicolosi was 17 of 30 for 202. No tutties and a pick. Hmm. I don't like that. But Justin Marshall had himself a day running the ball 18 times for 119 yards and a touchdown. You know, all week I thought Air Force was on the bye. They weren't. You know why I thought that? Because they played Hawaii on the island. So that game wasn't over until like probably 2 a.m. Mountain time. But the Falcons ended up losing to Hawaii 27-13. And then shouting out the alma mater, the UNC Bears. Lost to Northern Arizona 28 to 7. The Bears fall to 0 and 7 on the season. They're 6 and 16 in the Ed McCaffrey head coach era. And what stinks. And I guess this is this is a thing, man. Like, y'all gotta start somewhere as a coach, right? McCaffrey was 24 and 2 as a high school head coach. And won state titles. Now, granted, he had his son. I don't know if you've heard from Christian McCaffrey. Kind of a big deal. He had his son running you know, left, right, and center all over people at Valor, but he has one of his sons as his offensive coordinator and another one of his sons as a quarterback, and the Bears are still terrible. I don't know what it is. There's rumors that McCaffrey's not coming back next year. (sighs) UNC Bears have not been good at football ever, maybe, and that's sad. And last, but certainly not least, is a quick segment for you. Maybe the most surprising football team in the entire state. That's right, I said it. The Colorado School of Mines Ore Diggers. That's right, those old nerdy old engineer folk prove that football players are smart. Or that smart people can play football? Anywho, they beat Fort Lewis College yesterday 82 nothing. Yeah, that's right, I said it. 80 to nothing, clinching the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference title. <laughs> if that was an actual title football game, like, show me the team that they would lose to. I mean, their closest game was a field goal. They won 31-28 in week one against Grand Valley, but since then, all they've done is hang like John Madden numbers on people. <laughs> The Diggers were up 55 nothing at halftime. So hats off to the champs. And that's amazing. They're 11-0. They're just 
flat out killing people. I'm I'm still I'm sorry I'm speechless because I'm looking at 82 and 0 and they won 77 to nothing last week. Good grief. We're gonna take a quick break here. On the other side, let's talk about sports that are played inside. You're listening to Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What up, Boston sports fans? This is Mikey Two Guns here, your host of Our Bleepin' City, airing every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Please join me. We'll talk everything Boston sports, all the local teams, college teams. I'm even down to talk MMA, boxing, whatever you guys want. So join me every Wednesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. Chime in with your questions on the chat. Tweet the show. We'll even have Collins. I can't wait to hear from you guys. This is going to be a lot of fun. So once again, it's our bleeping city. I am your host, Mikey Two Guns. Every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. See you soon, people. Shout out to Mikey Two Guns and our Bleeping City Wednesdays Five Mountain here on the network. I bet he's got some spicy takes on those Boston Celtics right now and the Broncos take on the Patriots here in a couple weeks. But right now, you are listening to Mile High Musings right here on our eSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That's right. My very favorite co-host, the squeakiest chair in the nation, is back for the foreseeable future. But we are going to talk about indoor sports right now. Segment three, we maybe don't deserve him. No, that's a lie. We went through nug life. We deserve him. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikola Jokic is incredible. We know that. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Our Denver Nuggets, the reigning NBA champions, played twice this week. Monday against the Pelicans. They were down 20 at one point in this game. Now, Jordan Hawkins out of Connecticut was having himself a night for the Pelicans. That kid was on fire from three. And the Nuggets were down 20. But they go into halftime. They're down 19. They come back out. And the Nuggets throw the haymaker, that third quarter haymaker that they've been throwing all season. This was a late start, and I had turned it off to kind of get ready for bed. I laid, <laughs> as I lay my head on the pillow, I went, better check on the game. We were down only two after being down 19. So, of course, I watched the rest of the game because I'm a sicko and a sucker. Jokic did Jokic, Jokic things, man. 35 points, 14 rebounds, 12 assists. And with that triple-double, Jokic passed Jason Kidd and LeBron James for fourth all-time in career triple-doubles. He recorded 108 triple-doubles in half the games that the rest of these guys did. We're all witnesses to this era. Also, if you haven't seen his press conference from that game, it is hilarious. He sits down at the mic, he goes, okay, I know what you're going to ask, so I'll just, I'll just talk, and he's doing his little head rib thing. And he answers every single question. Every single question that, you know, they were going to ask. Shout out to Julian Stroud, the rookie out of Gonzaga, who had 21 points and looked like a straight killer in this game. It was his breakout game for sure. Michael Porter Jr. had 22 points and 9 boards. Oh, and AG doing AG things, 15 points and 12 rebounds. Unfortunately, though, Jamal Murray left this game with a hamstring strain, and it came out later in the week that he will miss, quote, significant time. That's no good, folks, but it's not like the Nuggets haven't been here before. They have traveled this road, and, and I think this group is pretty well prepared for it. MPJ is older, AG's in the mix. We have KCP now. It's just... I'm not saying Jamal Murray's not amazing. I'm saying I think we can navigate the waters while Jamal gets healthy. Now, you know, it's a hamstring strain, and I haven't heard whether it's the same, like if it's the hamstring on the same side where he blew out his knee or if it's the opposite, but you have knee surgery and, and having had knee problems and not knee surgery, but you favor one side, you favor the non-hurt side, and then that puts strain on your leg, and, you know, you're bound to get hurt like that, and I hope that's all it is. I, 
I think that you know, hamstrings are so touchy. It, look at look at Greg Dulcich, who was dealing with hamstring issues, and then came back and then can't and then came. Back. It's just so, especially when you're you play explosive sports where you have to be so fast from jump. You have to be very careful with them. And I think the Nuggets are right by holding them out and not pushing them back. Timetable-wise, if he's out the rest of the month, he comes back for the knockout stage of the NBA Cup. So I'm just saying, if we can get out of group stage, we might get playoff mall in December. Get wrecked. Woof. On Wednesday, the Nuggets welcome the Warriors to Ball Arena, a battle of the last two NBA champs. I heard some people say this game wasn't fun. I strongly disagree. Yes, it wasn't the high-scoring affair that these two teams are capable of, and that I think everybody expected to see, but the Nuggets were at the end of seven games in 11 days. The Warriors were at the end of a like eight-city trip, and that included like a one-night back in Oakland and then or San Francisco and then back out and like... It was just an insane stretch for them. So, of course, it was a little ugly. But it was back and forth, and it went down to the wire. And you know what? Non-Nugget take to that end. Steph is a non-Nugget superstar I really like. And not because he can shoot the three or whatever. Because he has fun. There were times where even the, you know, like the camera was catching him just kind of being goofy. And it's one of the same reasons that I incredibly love Nikola Jokic is that it's not too serious. Yeah, like Steph's got the killer instinct and when he wants to, he can. Same with Jokic and we saw that in the in the um sorry, in this game or in the third quarter Jokic called his number like six possessions Jokic called his own number like six possessions in a row. But Steph just was having fun and he and Jokic were kinda like having fun back and forth and it was the first time I'd seen in a regular season game, two guys just having fun. That's the way I liked to play. Back in my day, I had fun. It was fun to me. I played because I had fun. I played because I liked it. That's why I didn't play in college in the NBA, because I didn't have the killer instinct. But, to that end, I like Steph. Reggie Jackson stepped in to start at point guard for Jamal, which I think made the bench a little out of sorts, because the bench was straight up terrible in this one. But thank God above for Nicole Jokic and the starters. Because the bench was outscored 42-12. to And I think you push Reggie in, you make Colin Gillespie play more minutes, and that's going to throw off your rhythm. Because you can't... As much as I love Christian Brown, he's not the ball handling answer right now. Julian Strother was ice cold and got yanked. And that, that Michael Malone will do that. He'll ride the hot hand. He saw in the game against... The Monday game against the Pelicans, Strother was on fire. So he helped lead the charge back, and Malone gave him a leash. And Wednesday, Malone ran him back out there with a leash. But he, Malone keeps his rookies, in particular, on those leashes that, um, the metaphorical leashes, don't get twisted, where it's got the button push. You know what I'm talking about? If it's a little dog, little dog goes running, you push the button, and the little dog, like, whoop, feet in the air. Yeah, that's the kind of leash that Malone keeps the rookies on. Because Strother's feet went in the air. He bricked, or airballed one and bricked one real bad, and then he didn't see the light of day. But Jokic, you know, had 35. Again. 13 rebounds and 5 assists. And like I said, there was a stretch in the third where he called his own number 6, I think 6, maybe 7 possessions in a row. Because Kevon Looney, Dario Saric, they couldn't stop him. They couldn't. Jackson, the rookie Jackson Davis out of Indiana, no chance. It, <laughs> I used to think this way about Jordan. Which young kid is on that other team going, I want a piece. I'm going to stop him. Tonight, tonight, tonight's my night. I'm going to stop him. I'm going to stop MJ. And then Michael just looked across to the kid and was like, dude, you're in my world. This is my world. You're just living in it. Welcome to school. Jokic has put on a master class so many times this year. I mean, he's already got Chet. He's got this rookie kid from Indiana. I can't wait till he plays Wemby. Derek Lively for the Mavs. Like, they're running out all these young these young kids on Jokic, and he's going, okay, whatever. AG put in another, another double-double, 14 points and 11 rebounds. 
Nuggets moved to a league best 8-1 and one, and 6-0 and oh at home. With that, let's take one more break. And on the other side, it's crunch time. You're listening to Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, everybody? This is Darren Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Shout out to Taryn, the hardest working person in sports casting and sports podcasting land. Check out Set Point. You're back. I'm back. Coffee's about halfway done, which means this is Mile High Musings on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Again, shout out to Taryn and Steven who've been in the chat this morning. It is early, especially for Taryn on the West Coast, I know, but he's hustling like he does. Uh, it, Today's, episode, or today's segment of Crunch Time, here episode 18, the Sheriff's episode, the Peyton Manning episode, may be a good omen for this weekend. Let's jump into college indoor sports. I wish I could go back to college. That's from a musical called Avenue Q. Not safe for kids. Uh, but I liked to sing it back in the day when I was in college and right out of college. DU men's hockey played twice this weekend. Yeah, the Pios. I guess they're talking about them more because they play good hockey consistently. Not saying that, actually. I, I know how bad that sounds as I just dunked on the abs and said that they've been terrible recently. But, y'all, Pios hockey's good. They played twice this weekend at Arizona State. They split the series, losing Friday 6-5, to five, their first loss in regulation this year, and winning yesterday. At least somebody won yesterday. 8 to four. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And then, y'all, Monday, this past Monday, college basketball tipped off. I love college basketball. I really do. I love basketball. It's fun. It's my favorite. For sure. But we've got some scores to run through. And maybe not even some scores because there's a lot. But we're going to hit all, all the schools, as many schools as we can, real quick. Because it's crunch time. we got to go fast. See men's basketball won two games this week, beating Towson. Towson. I always want to put an N in there. I always want to call it Townsend. But it's Towson on opening night, 75-57. Ooh, a palindrome. See, that's me being nerdy because I was recruited by the Ore Diggers. Uh-huh. And then see men's beat Grambling, 95-63. Getting through the... Uh, non-conference part of their schedule. CU Women's shocked the world on Monday, beating the number one ranked LSU Tigers 92-78. Like, like they won big. And then they smacked LeMoyne 97-38. Oof. The Lady Buffs are ranked 20th in the nation right now. Go Lady Buffs. CSU Men's are 2-0 after beating Louisiana Tech and Wright State this week. CSU Women's are also 2-0. Dang, they beat LeMoyne. Oh, poor LeMoyne. And Alabama A&M this week. And then the Air Force squads. Well, they're both 1-1. One and one. Air Force women's uh, beat DU on opening night and then lost to Houston. And Air Force men's lost to Portland State on opening night, which I thought was the best game of all of the opening night games for our local colleges. And then they beat Long Island. Finally, in a redemption segment, got to shout out those UNC Bears men's basketball team starting the year 2 and 0 with wins over Colorado College and Northern New Mexico. Now, uh UNC has both CSU and CU on the schedule. But the, the thing is is that UNC basketball is way better than UNC football. So it won't necessarily be the blowout that I'm afraid of. Now, here in crunch time, I want to take a quick segment uh from the rundown and from the look ahead to preview 
because I forgot to put this in my notes. But preview a little something, something. Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, Monday night football. Broncos, Bills. And I think going into the season, a lot of people were looking at this week and this matchup as, could this be a preview of a playoff game? Some people could even maybe have made a case that if everything bounced the right direction, this could have been a preview of the AFC Championship game. I know that is a way out there take. However, we've seen how crazy sports are. And there's a lot of things that nobody predicted that have happened. I still stand by the fact that the Broncos have to close the year 5-3 and three to meet my prediction. And I don't know that that's going to happen. And even people on our network wrote that the Broncos will be playoff team. <laughs> no. But I digress. I think the hype at the beginning of the year for, for this week's Broncos game is a lot more, was a lot more than it is right now. The, the Bills are kind of showing that they're human. It's crazy. The Bills, the Bengals, and the Chiefs sort of the three AFC powerhouses over the last few years are really showing how human they are. It's good and bad because it's testing them and getting them ready for down the stretch football. But it's also giving teams like the Broncos a little hope. I mean, case in point, I picked up Josh Allen to be my fantasy quarterback. Wish I hadn't because there are other players that I could have easily picked up in the fantasy draft that would be netting me more points and I would not be last in my league. I think the Broncos are are maybe on the upside of that pendulum swing right now. They've got some momentum. They beat the Chiefs. They beat the Chiefs. They beat the Chiefs. And that is usually enough for the Broncos to you know, keep that upward trajectory going. Go Broncos! That's right, Penny Queen. Go Broncos. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's game one because the Broncos haven't played in two weeks. And it feels like forever. And I want to see what they're made of. This is the first time that Von Miller is going to play against the Broncos since he left. Isn't that crazy? He's either been injured or he hasn't had the Broncos on the schedule. So that is a little weird. But like I said, in the uh, coming out of Patty's drop there for the Buffalo Huddle, Von is a Bronco lifer. If you have a chance to see his comments from the week, they asked him about playing against his old team for the first time. He showered. Denver and the organization with praise. Uh, he's still friends with all the guys that he played with. I mean, maybe that's why I haven't gotten a new Broncos jersey in a while. It's because the last one I got was a Von Miller jersey. And I was really sad when we let him go. And I can't bring myself to buy another jersey because Von Miller is like the Super Bowl 50 era John Elway, which I saw that a lot on social media, is he John 2.0? I mean, if he would have stayed with the Broncos, yeah. Von Miller was John 2.0. But whatever, I want to see I want to see if the Broncos keep that run game going because, you know, it's going to be cold. For sure. Maybe Russell Cook. Who knows? All I know is, in this house, we praise the Lord and cheer for them Denver Broncos. I need you to know that during the first break, after segment one, uh, my daughters and my wife were outside the studio and I was waving at him and <laughs> Penny, my oldest, did her version of that drop and it made me laugh so hard. So that PTL Broncos was for Taryn and was for my daughter because <laughs> Taryn always looks forward to that drop every week. Um, I digress. Broncos, big game coming up tomorrow night. Super excited about it. I love some Monday Night Football when it's a good game or when it's the Broncos. And I also think, like I said, the Broncos are on the right side of that pendulum swing. I just, I just have a good feeling. I has a good feeling. But you know what? Let's start to put a bow on this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up this week for our teams, Nuggets play tonight at Houston, 5 p.m. Mountain Tip. Uh, it's on League Pass if you're outside of the network. If not, figure it out, Comcast. Tuesday night, they play the Clippers at home, 8 Mountain Tip, 9 o'clock Central on TNT and Friday at New Orleans, 6 Mountain, 7 Central tip. Tuesday and Friday are both NBA Cup group play games. I'm not calling it the in-season tournament anymore. I don't know that, that we've officially made the move to NBA Cup, but I hate writing in-season tournament. I literally hate how that looks on my screen. They're calling it the NBA Cup. That's the trophy they're getting. That's just what we should call it. So Tuesday and Friday are NBA Cup game, NBA Cup group play games, excuse me. 
So three three games this week for the Nuggets. Loving that. Abs play Monday in Seattle. Seattle again. Gosh darn it. Eight Mountain Pucker. Nine Central. Huh. I mean, if the ads are really that mad, they need to come out and punch Seattle in the mouth. I, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't condone fighting, and I know it's part of the hockey, but I was waiting for somebody to get in a fight for the abs, because they had none. So maybe they need to get in a fight with somebody against Seattle. Then they play Wednesday against Anaheim at home. Seven mountain puck drop on that one. And then Saturday, this coming week, they're in my neck of the woods at Dallas. Seven mountain puck drop. That can't be right. I bet it's a six mountain puck crop. I don't know. They play at the Stars. This is going to be a good game because the two top teams in the Central Division. Stars look good. Stars are on a roll. And then, of course, our Denver Broncos play Monday Night Football against the Bills tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us here today on Mile High Musings here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Don't forget to check out the other shows on the network and head over to all of the social media and the website to give us a follow. Thanks again. I am Aaron Yell signing off from the top of the mountain. A big old fat mile high salute to you. Stay good, sports fans.